taking so long. <sighs> I'm so hungry. I know what I can make us. Jelly donuts? No. <laughs> On a giddy. <laughs> oh. Not jelly donuts. Let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Elisa's Eats and today we are celebrating the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. I'm really excited because I thought we'd do something really simple and adorable but that really encapsulates Pokemon and we're going to be making Brock's on a Geary because the 25th anniversary reminds us we're getting older too and we want to relive our younger glory years when we just watch Pokemon and nothing else mattered. So originally in the dubbed version of Pokemon, way back when. They showed onigiri and they called them jelly donuts. They are not jelly donuts, they are onigiri, which is a Japanese rice bowl, which is uh, a seasoned rice with seaweed on the outside, either plain or with a filling inside. That's what we're making. We'll probably make jelly donuts another time and I'll be Brock again, but today we're doing that. So these are the ingredients you're gonna need. Hey, Flavia. Yeah. Do you know what those are? No. Do you wanna try one? I don't really. I'll sniff it. Uh, you don't what like that? It's pickled plum. Ew! It's what delicious. Uh, it's yummy. Uh, so you're going to need about two and a half cups of water, two cups of short grain rice, and we're going to be washing this in quite a lot of water because we want it to get nice and clear. We want to get rid of all the excess starch on here. To season our rice, we've got a quarter cup of rice wine vinegar, two tablespoons of caster sugar, and one to two teaspoons of salt. I'm using two teaspoons. It depends on if you like yours more savory or sweet. I'm using some umeboshi, which is pickled plum. And this is one of the fillings that was used in the anime. About 125 grams of drained tuna. And to that, we're gonna add about two to three tablespoons of cupy mayonnaise. This depends on the consistency you want and salt and pepper to season. And instead of using an actual filling, what is quite popular as well is just having the rice bowl with uh, seasoning on it. This is called furikake and can be found in any Japanese shop. I quite like this one because it's a mixture of seaweed, kelp and sesame seed. And then you're gonna need some dry nori seaweed. This is what you put on the outside of sushi just to make the final little decorations. Let's get started and fuel our bodies for an adventure. Pew! So what we're gonna do first is wash our rice. I'm gonna do this in a glass bowl so you can see how clean you need your rice. Now, ideally here, we would be using some nice river water, but we're just using nice filtered water from the tap. But do you see how starchy and white this water is coming? We're gonna to have to wash this about four or five times because this rice is quite starchy. And the older your rice is, the more you're gonna to have to clean it. Just a little tip. This is after about four washes, still not clear enough. So this was after about eight washes. This is probably as clear as we'll get it. Okay, now that our rice is all washed, we're going to put it on the stove, which ideally would be a campfire, but we're not allowed to cook outside with any form of flame because Perth is in a total fire ban because of bushfires. So let's relive our dream while cooking rice on the stove instead of the fire. Well, okay, 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 move, move, shaky, yeah, yeah, okay. So now we're gonna put our rice on a medium high heat and bring it to a boil. During this time, we're gonna lightly stir the rice just to make sure nothing sticks to the bottom. Once it's at a boil, we're gonna turn it down to low on a simmer, put the lid on and not touch it for about eight to 10 minutes. So while the rice is cooking, we're going to get everything else ready. So to season our rice, we're going to add our sugar and salt to our rice wine vinegar. So for the umeboshi or the pickled plum, the way that you do this, they come usually in a jar and they may be pitted. These ones aren't, they're very soft. So I literally just plop it out like that. And you can keep the plums whole or you can chop them up. Um, we'll probably do a bit of both to be honest. Now, I quite enjoy this one. This is one of the first kinds of rice bowl I had whenever I got to Japan. And it's, if you've never had anything like this, it's definitely an interesting taste, but it works really well with the rice. Now, when it comes to this, I really don't measure. I go more for consistency. 
So I'm gonna start off with about two tablespoons of Kewpie mayonnaise to the tuna, um, and then we'll go from there. You can also add a little bit of lemon juice to this, but we're not going to because Flavia doesn't like it. And then season with salt and pepper. Now, the filling for onigiri are supposed to be very flavorful. So try this and make sure that you like the flavor and make sure you season it with enough salt and pepper. For the seaweed, you just want to cut a small little rectangle just to wrap under the onigiri. When your rice is finished cooking, take the lid off, stir it around a little bit, then fold a tea towel over, put our lid on top. This is just to get rid of any excess moisture of the rice and to let it rest for about a minute or so. Now we're going to add our rice wine, sugar and salt mix to our rice. You want to do this while your rice is still hot so the seasoning really soaks into the rice. And then we're going to spread it out onto a plate and we're going to fluff it up with a fork and a fan just to cool it down quickly. You want it nice and fluffy. This is really hard, it's like doing that with your head and like patting the thing. It's really hard. I'm actually going to spread this over two plates just because I prefer my rice to be a bit flat and make sure that it's all aerated so it doesn't clump. You can also do this on like a baking sheet just to make sure it cools down efficiently. If you're in the wild, you can use a banana leaf or some kind of big leaf that's not poisonous. Brock would know. I mean, I would know. Glam Brock. Now, to assemble these, what I'm doing is using some salt water to dip my hands in. This is also to help season, but also to stop the rice from sticking to my hands. So we're gonna take some rice into one of our hands. Then I'm gonna put some of my filling inside, then cover it with some more rice. And then again with wet hands, shape it to what I need it to be. So I'm gonna make some little round ones and some triangle ones. The round are gonna be the plum filling and the triangle are gonna be the tuna filling. So the way that I do this, I push it down. So you can see I'm kind of squishing it a little bit. That's just giving it enough pressure to kind of put the filling in with the rice so it won't leak out. I make a flat surface like so. This would be for either the round one or the triangle one. And then with this kind of movement with my hand, I start to push him down and turn him into a little triangle. And you use both of your hands. You can do any shape, but this is what I do because I'm Brock and my onigiri are legendary. Alternatively, if you don't want to do this, you can use some plastic wrap as well. It works just as good. So this is a good way to ensure there's enough pressure on your onigiri. You just tighten the plastic wrap like this, and it also makes it a little bit easier to shape in a triangle or a circle if you're doing the other one. So again, before handling him now, I would still wet your hands a little bit. Make sure you're happy with him. Oh, I think he looks pretty gorgeous. Then we're gonna put the seaweed. Now this will stick to the rice itself, that's why it's so good. Wrap it under and to the back. Doesn't he look handsome? Okay everyone, so this is how you make my or Brock's onigiri. It's really quick, really simple, and I hope you love it. There's a lot of Pokemon out here making noise. There's another one. <gasps> is that a Pidgey? <laughs> I hope you enjoy it, and let's eat. Yay! Yeah. I mean, All right. Ash can just oh. get his own food. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna break mine in half. Yeah, me too. Oh, I got a little Ooh. plum in both sides. It's a bit cute. Very exciting. Okay. I just destroyed it. Oh, it's so good. Mm. I love tuna. Yummy. This reminds me of the first time I went to Japan. My friend Rasaka was like, you have to try one of these rice bowls. And I was like, what's in it? She's like, pickled plum. I was like, what? Huh? <laughs> it's really nice. If you don't wash them or you get too salty ones, they can be much, but these are really kind of soury salty. I'm curious to try it. Do <laughs> it. All right, let's see. I didn't like the smell of it, but <laughs> let's give it I a love go. It. She has the tuna one. I kind of like it. I know, it's a I'm weird confused. experience. Have you ever had it before? No. Mm -mm. It's because it's got that weird, sour, salty sweetness. 
and you're like, I've never had anything and with, like this yeah, before. Yeah, with the rice as well, it's like, it mm. works really well. Imagine having a little picnic-y thing like this. Y'all are just out trying to catch the Pokemon, being the having best. Having a good time. Yep, just try to catch them all, get a bit hungry, have an onigiri. I think you'd be happy. There I think you, you would. <laughs> Hi, Fred. <laughs> Wild Meowth appears. Hi, Meowth. You want some? No. <laughs> okay. We'll get you some poker chow or a puffin. Hey guys, thanks, thanks for watching, watching this video. video. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. And leave a comment in the section below so that we can make something you've always wanted to eat. Because I love it. <laughs> Bye. Bye! Preferably anime or something TV related or something like that or something awesome game related.